it's Harry from Classic Cottage Art and Antiques in Bowling Green, Virginia, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Creating at Classic Cottage. Today, we're going to finish the table that we started in the last video, and I'll post a link for you, um, where we took a dining room table and cut it down into this console table. It's up on my paint, uh, my table, my paint booth now. But we've got a little bit more prep to do before we get to the actual finishing of it. This particular piece had was, if you remember, was created from several different components. So to prepare this piece, I actually watched it as usual with Dixieville White Lightning, and then I rinsed it with clear water. I made sure I got all the residue off so that the paint or the stain will stick. I did not wash the top because I didn't want the, the bare wood to, to be wet when I was doing my finishing process. So the preparation we need to do first is fill in the holes on the back legs left by the hooks on the hat rack. Um, the front legs also had some areas where they need to have Dixie Mud put in there. Dixie Mud is actually a filler, similar to spackle, only quite a bit thicker. It's applied pretty much just like spackle, so if you've ever done spackle, you know how to use Dixie Mud. What I will tell you is never ever wash Dixie Mud down your drain. Um, it can harden and cause plumbing issues. Also, if you're going to use it for raised stenciling, be sure and don't wash your stencils in the sink after you use it, and don't wash your hands in the sink after you're using it. I actually um, recommend having a wet paper towel or baby wipe or something handy so you can clean your tools and you can clean your hands. When you fill the holes with the Dixie Mud, make sure you overfill the holes because it does have a tendency to shrink. Also, Dixie Bell recommends that you keep it in a cool place. Uh, they they recommend the refrigerator. Uh, mine stays in the basement where it's cool, so that works just fine as well. Also, once you sand the Dixie Mud, you may have to reapply it to fill in the holes where it has shrunk. So once you have sanded your Dixie Mud down, before you stain with the no paint gel stain, I recommend putting a light coat of Dixie Bell Clear Boss over the Dixie Mud. What that does is it provides a barrier between the stain and the mud so that it will stain evenly. Once you have all of that done, you're ready to stain with Dixie Bell Paint No Pain Gel Stain. Here I have taped the top of the table so that the stain doesn't get on the portion where I want to actually paint. Um, later on, you'll see that I actually changed my mind and decided to paint the, the edge of the table to look more like marble. The next step is to paint the top of the table with Dixie Bell Boss. Boss stands for blocks odor, stains, and stops bleed through. The bleed through is what I'm trying to prevent now. I don't know what type of wood this tabletop is, but I don't want any of the tannins or oils to come up through the wood to stain my white paint. So I'm going to be preventative and use Dixie Bell Boss. What you really want to do um, when you do this is you want to make sure all of the dust is off your table first. So take a tack cloth or a slightly damp rag or something and then just get it all off. Now when you are using boss, particularly the white boss or the gray boss, be sure and stir it up really really well. The boss tends to settle and it can also clump in the bottom so you want to make sure it's it's mixed up thoroughly so it does its best blocking. Uh, the, the bottle, the jar says shake, but stirring is actually recommended in my opinion. So once you apply, once you do that, I always put it in a separate dish or bowl or plate or something because I don't want to contaminate my jar of boss with whatever tannins or something that might be on the table. So I'm going to apply my boss with a yellow sponge I got from the Dollar Tree and I like to use a damp sponge and I want to make sure I have a very smooth finish on this. I actually use a yellow sponge a lot on very large areas. It just seems to work for me, particularly on base coats lately. Um, so I don't put a whole lot on the sponge at one time because I want to avoid having any ridges. Any ridges that I create during this base coat of boss will transfer all the way to the final finish. Once I do that, I let it dry. 
and then we'll be ready for staining. So now we're ready to stain the bottom. I actually um, changed my mind on the top. I decided to take the white all the way to the edge since I've seen uh, the marble tables in my home actually have that little detail. So I decided to go ahead and do that. So this is boss and it's drying. I did actually decide to do two coats of boss because there was in fact bleed through. So there we go. So now I'm gonna do this side and probably here for you now just to show you. But um, you can see where I've added the Dixie mud here to fill in the holes. That's my second coat. Here, there was Dixie mud and I put a coat of clear boss on that so that when I stain it, it will all come out evenly. So let me talk to you about the Dixie Bell No Pain Gel Stain. First, I'm gonna put a glove on because I don't really wanna have stain on my hand for like, you know, a week. It comes in this size can here. It's a 10 ounce can, I think, and gives you easy access. What you do wanna do in all cases is stir it up really, really well. And when you get finished, put the top on it really, really tightly. Use a um, rubber mallet or something just to make sure it's closed. There's no air in there and it'll keep your stain a lot longer. I had some left over in the old can. So I'm just gonna use the old can. And again, this is walnut. I wanna kinda of keep the same colors that the table already is. And it's, um, remember now, this is a oil-based stain, so it does have an odor to it. You wanna work in a well-ventilated area. And I'm just stirring it up just to make sure it's all mixed up nice and evenly. The good thing about the gel stain, if you've watched my other videos on the stain, um, it can go over an existing finish. We've cleaned obviously with white lightning, rinsed it really well. In this case, I've sanded some because it really, it needed some sanding. It had some lumps and bumps and chips all over it. So I wanted not, didn't want that to be in my final finish. So, all right, that's turned out pretty good. And I've got it all um, a shop towel because it's less lint or non-lint. You want that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these Dollar Tree sponges that I like to cut up because I can throw them away and they're inexpensive. You could also do this with an applicator pad that we have from Dixie Bell. They work fantastically, but I'm working in small spaces and the applicator pads are about so big. So I wanted something I could get into the tight spaces with. Do it, you don't really need a whole lot. But let's do here. And I'm leaving that because I don't want to get the stain on the white. Oh yeah, that's gonna look nice. So nice. Now I can leave it like this or I could wipe it back. I've got the rag just in case I decide it's too much and I want to wipe it back. But this sponge is really good about getting in some of the, you know, the little recess areas here. Make sure I get it up under here. Around this way. And anywhere that I have the, um, the Dixie mud, I have actually put a little bit of the clear boss on it. And I left that on here. It's going to need to be sanded down again. I've left that on here just to show you what it looks like. So I'm not going to be doing that leg today. Be sure you don't get too many, you know, clumps and lumps. And I'm trying to take my sponge and get into these little narrow areas here. But this is a super quick way to finish a piece of furniture. You can even do this with an existing finish. Just make sure you clean it really well. If in fact your original finish has um, been cleaned with pledge or with, um, what is that stuff? Old English, uh, a lot of old furniture was cleaned with that sort of thing. And that tends to build up. So you wanna make sure you get all of that off take some of this and use mineral spirits to get all that build up from the old cleaners off of it then clean it with white lightning and then put your stain on now if I don't like this how dark it is now I can take before it dries and wipe it back some so I can see some of the grain which I might just do let's work in that small space because see it's a little more Looks a little chocolatey to me right now. Now let's get the lumps off of this side here. This is a 
super quick way to transform furniture. I'm trying to get in these little areas here. And I really think I want some of the grain to show through better. So I'm going to take my shop towel and I'm just going to wipe it back some. Now I've let it sit for a few minutes just to let it soak in. This is old, old wood, so it's it didn't need to have the mineral spirits on it because it's it's so old. <laughs> there was no nothing left on it. And the beauty of this gel stain, right, is that it doesn't drip. The traditional stains that you might see, they actually are drippy. And I'm going to go in this little recess area because I didn't quite get it in there, but this is cool. But the traditional stains are really runny. So if I were to do this like this, I'd be trying to catch all the drips and everything. This gel stain goes on so beautifully. I really like some of the original finishes coming through, even though I've stained over it, it just kind of freshened it up. I really like this. That's good for a minute. But just like that, look at the difference after, before. So once the Dixie Mud dries here, I'll be able to sand this down and go and do the rest of the bottom. But just that quick, boom, it was like, finish it up. So now we're ready to do our marbling technique on the top of this table. Let me tell you how I got to this point. I have put two coats of Dixie Belle Boss in the white because it was a bleeder. I uh, put the first coat on, left it overnight, and yep, yeah, sure enough, it started to bleed. So I said, you know what, let me put another coat. So I put another coat of Boss on it, let that dry real good. And this has now two coats of Dixie Belle fluff. So, applied it with the Dixie Belle mini angle brush and we're good to go. It's dry. So what I like to do before I go any further, I wanna make sure this is nice and smooth. This is our finishing pad, burnishing pad, I think they call it. And I'm just gonna go over it real lightly. Now remember this paint is not cured. So I wanna make sure and I don't get too crazy with it. It's dried, but it's not cured. It's gonna take 30 days. It's damp here, so 30 days, yeah, and then some maybe. This is what we did before. Looks okay. <clears throat> However, I decided it might be a little too gray for what I want. I, I wanted it to be a little more white. So I'll show you how I get around that. I'm, I'm, fairly good with that. Always do a sample board first and that'll help you not have to repaint your whole table again. Just a tip there. All right, so we're gonna take Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat. There it is, there's Satin Clear Coat and some of the same fluff that I used on the top here and some water. I wanna get it too terribly soupy because like I said this isn't cured so it may actually pull it up if it's if it gets too too wet all right let's see what we can make no exact recipe here it's just kind of it's, you want it relatively runny there's a spoon here make sure it's dry stir up my paints to make sure all the pigments are still stirred up really well just let's go right here it's a little warm in my paint booth today so I gotta work kind of quickly I don't want to shake that up too much Ooh. if you find you can't get your lids open this shelf liner stuff is great I'm gonna stir it up a little thick. This will give you more open time on your um, it's a 
sort of a glaze. I think the technical term is scumble. I, I meant to look that up and find out where it was, what it meant, but okay. And I'm going to use Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain. You could very well, as a matter of fact, I'm going to use both driftwood. Got my little FIFO bottle here, and I don't want a whole lot of this, just a little bit. Just a little bit of the driftwood, just to get a little tint, and maybe just a little bit. Let's do let's do it without that first and see what happens. And I'm going to use some water out of this water bottle and pour it in there. Not a lot. It's just kind of soupy, but I don't want it soppy soupy. I'm going to take my handy dandy little stir stick thing here and mix it all up. And these foam plates are really good for this because they're not going to fall out all over the place because of the edges. Not quite soupy enough for me. water in there. That glaze, yeah. Let's put some more clear coat in there too. There we go. I kind of want it fairly soupy, but not so wet it's going to pull the paint up. Ideally, you might want to wait till overnight for this to get a little drier. Now the reason I did the burnishing pad was to kind of knock down what I call the fuzzies. Um, if you've ever painted raw wood, you'll see that the, the water in the paint raises the grain. And I like to make sure it's nice and smooth before I go ahead. You can also do that with very fine grit sandpaper. But the burnishing pad for this works just as well. Now we're getting some soupiness in there. How about if we put just a tad more of the driftwood in? Just a tad. Now let's get slightly crazy and just put just a little bit of this beauty gel stain in up in smoke. It's the gray. The beauty gel stain you remember is water-based gel stains. Unlike what we put on the bottom here, the bottom was the oil-based. I'm just going to put a couple of drops here and there. Don't need a whole lot. I don't want it to make it really dark. And I'm going to just kind of work that in. Just to give it a little bit more color. Beauty gel stain has a different consistency too, so it'll be a little bit more, um, it'll be a little more open time again. I gotta be careful in this. I get a little carried away sometimes. Okay. Alrighty. Here we go. I wanna be also very careful not to drip it on my bottom of my table. Now, I, I left the tape on here. It was pulled down so it doesn't stick. It's attached to the table part. And if I need to, I can go back with the stain later and touch up those areas. But I don't want the this to drip down on what I've stained. Found yesterday that this really big brush, it's a four inch brush, it was made for faux finishing way back in the 90s. This also though, with your um, Dixie Bell premium chip brush. So I'm gonna dip it in there. It's kind of soupy, I'm gonna get a lot of it off, I don't wanna make a blob. Now remember from our sample that we're working in angles. I think now about 45 degrees, but we're going to work in angles because that's how real marble goes. Sure enough, on my tables, that's how it goes. <clears throat> Let's start over here and see what happens. And we're just going to kind of get a bit closer so I can. And we're not going to put it everywhere. Remember, we want some of that white, white showing through there. And I'm not working at an angle like I'm supposed to be, but here we go. You don't want really any straight lines across like that one. I'm going to fix that one. Kind of 
kind of some opener and I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I go down here but I want to be very careful that I don't I'm still going in an angle but I want to make sure I don't drip on the front of my table you know they're cutting if this were real marble it's cut from a real a slab so the slab is going to have that vein running through it you know all the way to the edge because it's cut I'm going to kind of do like this very careful not to get it on my front there. See, I got a little bit of darker right there, and that's perfectly fine because, well, it has darker. Now, the cool thing about this, as I mentioned before, is if you don't like it, paint over it. Start again. Try again. We had do-overs on this, and this table isn't that large, so, I mean, it's it's gonna take no time hopefully to do this we're using our shop towels you can use a, probably a t-shirt rag would be better but this is what i happen to have on hand here shop towels that have not too much lint on them do like this it's just like three towels and i'm kind of going to fold it like so give me kind of a flat spot right there and i'm going to start over here and I'm just going to take, and I'm kind of going to, I'm kind of not, I'm pouncing, but I'm pouncing and kind of sliding just a little bit. See, it's really wet right there, so it's going to stay wet for a little bit. If it gets too soppy wet, I'm going to flip it over and do it again, nice and flat on the bottom. This, this actually helps it dry a little bit quicker and it also spreads it out so it doesn't look like you've done kind of a pouncing motion. giving yourself a background to do the veining. If you ever look at marble, it's not like white, white all the way through. It's got all this depth and movement, which is what makes it kind of cool. Now, there are other ways to do this. This is just the way I have done it. So there's a lot of white spaces left in there. I may have left too many, so let's kind of go back and see what we've got going on here. Let me look at it from this side. So I got a little blob right there I didn't finish. I don't know, can you see right here the kind of the movement already though? That's kind of cool. Um, I don't know, I might leave it alone. You know? I'm looking at it and I'm thinking. You know, I think. And that's what you do. Step back and look at it before you go to the next step. From all angles here. I'm going to bobby there still. If you like this and this is all you want, you're done. Put some gator hide on it and you're done. I can't leave it alone. I want it to look like marble with veins in it. Some voodoo gel stain in the up and smoke because it's got a darker value. And I'm gonna take because I, I decided this was okay. But I really wanted some darker veining going on in there. So a little bit of the fluff in there. Fluff is a, is a white, but it has a little bit of a gray undertone. And I probably got way too much, but that's okay. Better to have enough when you're mixing colors than not enough. I don't know about you, but invariably I never mix the same color twice unless I measure. And I'm not one to measure a lot. Okay. A little bit of the hurricane gray in there as well. 
and let's just dump it over. And I don't want a lot of this on this particular step. I mean, I'm talking a dollop. It's very close in value to the up and smoke, but not quite the same. Okay. And then I'm going to use the satin clear coat. Again, I want to make it kind of soupy because I want to make veins. Feather is best. I still don't have a feather. I didn't go find one. But I found what I was doing yesterday worked pretty good, but I found some other brushes I might try today. And I'm going to need some water. Again, I don't want to get it too soupy because what will happen is, obviously this isn't cured. It's not even dry that well. It should be drier. But um, it could start pulling up the paint if it's too, too wet. So I want to be careful with that. I think I might put a dollop of driftwood as well. Dollop will do ya. Now the cool thing is I can add or take away again if you don't like it. And paint the whole thing over and start again. Paint your base coat and start again. Alright. For veining, Yesterday I used this little round brush that worked pretty well. Today it's on a bigger surface, so I'm going to try this round brush here. Um, I don't know where I got it, but it's, it's a cool brush. And I found this one that I've really loved. It's about a one and a half or two inch brush, about a one, maybe one inch brush. It is well loved, can you tell? It might be kind of cool to make, I don't know, splotchy messes, what I call it. The key is to have fun. Don't make this so stressful that you're not going to want to do it. Now, I'm going to start over here because I'm going to go in this direction here like I did. You want to go in the same direction as the scumble coat. I um, and I'm going to get it really soupy. I don't want to put it over there too much, but I want to get it soupy enough to where it kind of just moves. See, it's kind of drippy. I'm going to put it in some of the darker values. So I'm going to try not to drop it all over the place. You have to stand up. And I'm going to start here. And I'm just going to kind of do like that. I might go to this brush here and dip it in here. Maybe I want a little bit bigger vein. And it's on the side here, and you know, you can roll it because veins are not particularly straight. I might want another one, I don't know, here. My light's getting out of the way. And you don't have to put a lot of veins in here. I mean, you don't have to put any if you don't want to, but I'm gonna like, the, you know, kind of let it go where it wants to. Kind of roll it kind of like that maybe on the end some this vein it's going to go all the way down here off to the edge here maybe under there like that okay i'm liking this round brush it's kind of it's not real stiff it's kind of soft maybe this one comes like this and i'm kind of just letting it flow off my hand i don't know like so. Probably ought to go over here and do that too. Because that vein is going to run through that whole piece right there. Might want to. Alright. I'm getting into some of the darker ones. Now this vein, it might want to go over here and meet up with this one and kind of do one of these guys right here. Then it might decide to do, I don't know, one of these things here. And kind of go off way over here. Talk to yourself. Make it fun. Give it a personality if you need to. 
And what I'm doing too, I don't know if you can tell, I'm not putting in the same area of my plate because it's, you know, it's different colors and different um, consistencies all on my plate. I don't want to start on the edge because it's going to drip on me. But I'm just kind of rolling my hand, kind of like so, like this. You know, it's just, I'm having fun with it. Now I'm going to come over here and catch it because I don't want it to drip on my stain. I might even put a piece right there that kind of does that. And if you remember in the sample board I did, I don't really want to do anything straight across, but it could connect with another one, you know. I don't know, we're just going to have fun with it. Now this one naturally looks like it wants to have something like that going on, you know. And he might want to go over here just because he's being ornery. There is absolutely no right or wrong way to do this. Just have fun with it, you know? The only rule that you could probably want to do is kind of like make it at an angle. Also, you know, I'm kind of washing these things because I don't really want to cover up all the white there. I've got a little straight there, but it's okay. I'm gonna get in this little darker value over here maybe and see what happens. because I don't want this to dry. It's kind of, oops, kind of warm in here. So we're going to do the same thing. It looks kind of harsh right now, so we're going to we're going to straighten that out a little bit. We're going to take our shop towel and we're going to kind of see what happens if you make it, let it dry too much. It gets um, in halos is what I call it. You may have to go back and fix that. So don't let it dry as long as mine did. to be a little soupier too. Okay. When I say not a problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brush here. I'm going to get it pretty damp. Not soppy wet damp, but pretty damp. And I'm kind of going to go I'm just going to kind of play in the vein here. And maybe loosen it up a little bit. Those edges are kind of sharp. It also will give me an opportunity then to um, put in some darker veining. I'm going here. I'm not going to let it sit as long this time. So. See, this is kind of messed up here. Not a big deal. We'll just go back in and fix it. It's just paint, y'all. I mean, if you don't like, like I said, if you don't like, ooh, look at that. Ooh, I like that. If you don't like it, you can always fix it. Also, if you enjoyed these videos, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. I'd appreciate that. And set your notifications so you know when a new video comes up. That's a little blobby there. What do you think? Again, no right or wrong. Come on, we're just we're just playing. This is the cool thing too. You can experiment with see you know what works. What doesn't? Because this paint is still fairly wet. It's not obviously it's not cured yet. Remember now, this is going to take 28 to 30 days to cure, 21 to 30 days to cure. So once you even get or hide it, you're going to need to be to let be, use it gently for 21 to 30 days.
You're going to want this to dry overnight before you put gator hide or any kind of top coat on it. Now, if you, what happens if you've got too much right there? What I'm going to do, I'm going to take this, my original brush, and I'm kind of going to do this feel right here. I'm going to erase a little bit. Those weird spots I don't like. Let's see. is I'm going to mix up this mixture here and make it very translucent. So I may have too much paint. I may have to add some more satin clear coat. Not a problem. I'm going to stir it first. Matter of fact, I want quite a bit of this satin clear coat because I'm going to want it to be more open, to act more like a glaze. Loving it. What do you think? Okay. I'm not worried about the streak marks. I'm going to take another sharp towel. Use a lot of sharp towels in this technique. And because it's like a glaze, I'm going to wipe it back. Oh, yes. Goodness. I love this. Be very careful still not to get it on my stain. but it's leaving just like a haze almost and pushing it down into another look. It doesn't really show up as good on the camera as it does in person, but it's it's a really cool finish. And I will take and I will do gator hide. Once this is dried, probably tomorrow, but I wanted to give you a tutorial on how to make faux marble. There you have it. A really pretty faux marble table and the stained legs. All Dixie Bell products. Super easy to do. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.